Okay, so Baruch Hashem, we're back to a Zman Charef Aleph, Habalein Latoiva, and should be a Zman of Atzlocha. Does someone want to go inside on my table? There's two bags, not you. Can you go inside the table? There's the bags with the Mama Kamas. Okay. The Ketur Shoshan. Okay. I want to bring out a very uh, important Ha'ara from the Parsh here. The Parsh says like this, Eil Tolz Noach, Noach Yitzadik Tam Haya Badoros of Esel Kim Esalach Noach. Noach is the quintessential Tzadik. Yeah? The Torah doesn't call does it call anyone else a tzaddik? Yosef, it's, you also call Yosef a tzaddik. The Torah doesn't say he's yet. Noach, I believe, is the only person in the Torah who's called a tzaddik. Um, and yet, we find something quite astounding. Right? Noach, he spent a hundred years building the teva. But when the time comes for the mabil, he doesn't get on. Like, you know, we know Yiddish here, but it's Like, what's going on here? You know? A hundred years. It's not like he spent a day or a week or a month or a year a hundred years building the Teva and telling people it was going to be a flood and then the rain starts coming and he doesn't get on the Teva. Chazal tells us something. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to find the table. I'm going to put it over there. Chazal, uh, Chazal tells us, so you can put it right here. Chazal tells us that Noach's mikatne amana. He's a katne amuna. And it always bothered me. You know, The Torah saying he's a tzaddik. Yet it says he's a katne amuna. Yeah? So what's Pshat in this? So I'll tell you the Pshat I came up with it. Afterwards, I found something which seems to be a steer. It needs to be worked through. Minish Shamayim. Yeah? But I heard Rav Revda said from Rav Chatzka Levenstein that he was a cotton in Amuna. He was a cotton. And there's Gedolim in Amuna and there's Katanim in Amuna. Right? A person could be a Gadol and a cotton. Right? Noach was, he had, let's say, the Hashkafic status as a cotton in Amuna. And there's Gedolim in Amuna. It's katana in Amuna, right? Noach was a cotton in Amuna. So, a few questions I want to analyze today. Number one, what does it mean to be a cotton in Amuna? What does it mean a cotton? What does it mean a gadol in Amuna and a cotton in Amuna? Number one, right? In halacha, it's clear, right? A cotton can't make kinyanim. He can't, uh, well, certain kinyanim maybe can make, but you know he can't do halachic certain halachic pulas, right? Certain he's not chayav in mitzvahs. But what is it? What's the halachic? or shkafic ramifications of being cut in a muna, number one. And my second question is, what can we do that we shouldn't be cut in a muna? We want to be, we want to be cut in a muna, befrat, because I'll tell us the Mishnah end of Sota. The Mishnah at the end of Sota, the last number of Sota, Daf Memtes, says 19 things which will exist before Mashiach comes, right? And then it says, the last one is, We have to have complete amun in Hashem, Ain't nothing to rely on, right? You know, I don't know if you've been watching the news here. I was um, sitting in this base medrash before the end of last month, and I called a taxi, and um, I was about to get in, and suddenly every, all the cell phones went like hell, haywire. So attack of missiles from Iran, 181 missiles were thrown at us. Right? Baruch Hashem, not one of them killed anyone except for one Arab. Uh, so um, Israel struck back. When was it? It was the last Shabbos, right? Last Shabbos they struck back, and now Iran says they're going to strike back again to us, you know. So this is what's called tit for tat, except, you know, this. Um, Mr. Hashem, we have presidential elections in America next week. This is a major uh, ramification for what's happening in the world. These are auspicious times, yeah. And I asked Rav Stefani point blank last, um, last Shabbos. I asked him point blank, is Moshiach coming? Right? Is Moshiach coming? He said, it looks like it. And he asked me, like, like kind of like, it looks no, like things are definitely going on here. Right? How long will this process take? Heavenly Mashiach, we don't know. Yeah? It could be today. It could be, who knows. Yeah? I told you from the Lesh, and the Lesh says something incredible. He brings a Medrash on Elam, right? that says, it takes between 209 years and 214 years for Tchias HaMesim and the building of the base of Mignosh, right? You know, Tchias HaMesim is not just like snap and everyone jumps out of the graves, you know? Uh, it takes time. It's a process, right? It takes between 209 and 214 years. We have a Kabbalah from Chazal, yeah? It's a Gemara in Sanhedrin and other places that the world is supposed to exist 6,000 years. If you do the math, anyone here know math? You, are you guys Edri? What? 215 left. 215, right. So that means between one and six years, right, either Mashiach should come or, you know, 
Or if it doesn't, then, you know, it's like, now there is, he brings afterwards, my Chavusa and Kabbalah and Shavuos reminded me that there is another sheet that maybe it's 6,093 years. So there's like a few shilas here. But things are definitely moving here. Things are definitely happening. And the, one of the primary things we need during this time is the Muna. That's what it says. Elan Lishan al So if the Torah is telling us that Noah was a cotton in a Muna, yeah, it says, what was Rashi? It says, Mamin Vayna Mamin. Yeah? He was a Mamin, but it was the Ena Mamin. Right? He spent so long building this, this Teva, and yet he didn't get on the Teva. So, number one, how can we understand he was a Tzaddik yet he was a cotton in a Muna? Number two, what can we do that we shouldn't be Katanim and Muna, right? And how does that affect us specifically during this very auspicious times when we're seeing so many things happening in the world so quickly? Okay, so I'd like to suggest as follows, and I, just, I think it's Pashib Shat, but please correct me if you, um, if you think that it's not, yeah? A co- what's the difference between a cotton and a gunnel, right? Okay, we know a cotton has das. Sorry, a gunnel has das, a cotton doesn't have das. He doesn't have a lochic das, right? Das... It comes from the word chibur, vayida, um, um, adam, eschav, ishtoy. It comes from connection, das connection. Das is bringing ideas. The Vilna Gon says, this chokhmah bin and das. Chokhmah is when I learn. I read a Pasuk, right? The Pasuk says um, uh, here, um, it says here, Noach, Eilatos, Noach, Noach, Sadek, Tamim, Hayab, Dorosav, Tzukim, Lachanam, Dorosav in his generations. Then I have a question. Why it says Doras of Sarash? He says, Yesh Dorsh Nalaganai, Yesh Dorsh Nishvach. Maybe he would have been a tzaddik in the time of Avram, maybe not. That's already called Bina, insight. Das is putting all the ideas together. You know, you learn a Gemara, that's Chokhmah. You start asking questions, that's Bina. When you get the answers from all you've shown him and you put them together and you come out of Lachlamais, that's called Das. Das is the ability, in, in the industry, say, to Shtel Su, is the ability to put things together and to understand and come to a conclusion based on that, right? It says, I don't, okay, there might be women watching, but women are Kali Das. Before I got married, I had a discussion with Robson Heller. She said, women are not stupid. They can be very smart. A lot of women are more intelligent than their husbands, right, Moshe? Yeah, right? But they, they, they lack Das. Yeah, they have Bina Yisera, right? You know, a husband is babysitting his baby and the baby's crying. The woman gets home and says, like, you know, maybe he's hungry. Oh, I didn't think of that, you know. So they have Bini Yisera, they're given that so they can run the home. But they're Kalandas. The ability to make a decision, yeah, and to stick to it, and to live by that, that women are less strong, and men are more strong, so each one has their specific attributes what they're strong in. So that's, that's, that's Das, right? And the difference between a cotton and a is, is that Das. It's an amazing thing. 12 years old and minus, 13 years old and minus one day, He's a cotton. That he bar mitzvah, he gets he gets he gets das. A mechanic once explained to me. I asked him a question. I said, before that a cotton becomes a gadol, he doesn't have a yitzhara. So it should be very. It should you know how can he win the war of yitzhara when you only have yitzhara? You don't have yitzhara. So he said, when there's competition, it makes it much harder. By when a part when a, when a, a child becomes a gadol, the yitzhara tov comes in. And now they start fighting. He said, when the yitzhara is by itself, you just give him a candy and he it keeps quiet. But when the Yetzir HaMatov comes in, then they start fighting. Then it's, then it's Lahudim, as they say. Okay, so that's definitely a cut in the gutl. A cut doesn't have Das. He's unable to make the important decisions that he has to make in life. So how does he do it? How does a cut live his life? Yeah? Anyone, anyone have an answer? How's a cut? How's a cut get a goal from? What does a cut do? Relies on his adults. What? Relies on the adults. Oh, relies on the adults. Very good. I'll explain a little bit what Yeshua means. Right? He relies on adults. It's not like that. But he does what he's told, more or less, hopefully. Right? And it depends, again, how skilled the mechanic is. Right? Right? Um, it used to be they had this thing called spare the rod, spoil the child. You know, that's Pasuk and Mishle. Right? Um, sone, kosech uh, shifto sone bno. Right? Today, if you hit your kids, then they'll call the police and you'll get arrested. I know it's happened in New York. Somebody was punishing his child and they called the police and they, they took him down to the police station. Okay, so this is not such... And the uh, Revolva told me and Rav Israel Orbach told me it's not the Mahalik for today to use a physical punishment. Yeah? Today you have to speak more to them. Right? If, you're, if, you're, if you're really good and smart and a good educator, you lose positive reinforcements. You know, you're such a good, you're such a good boy. You're a tzaddik, you're a tzaddikus. Right? You could really achieve something, maybe throw in some candies or some incentive. Right? But that's what Yeshua is saying. 
they are motivated by incentives. This incentive, that incentive, this, that. Right? That's, that's a cotton. Right? A guttle, he doesn't necessarily, he takes incentives into, into account, but he's not just pushed by the whims or other people telling him what to do, do this, do that. Right? He's able to make his own decisions yeah, based on what's going on around him, based on his, what he needs to do. All these different, all these different factors, right? And that's the difference between cotton and gadol. There's a cotton and gadol in amuna as well, yeah. There's a cotton and gadol in amuna as well, right? A god, a cotton in amuna will do things because he has no choice, yeah. If you know the water gets, if it starts raining and the water gets up to my nose and I have to go into the table, I'll go in, right? But until that time, right? Unless I'm like Yeshua said, unless I'm pushed by outside forces, I won't be'etzim have amuna. I won't be'etzim have amuna. And this is really critical. We see it throughout Sefer Bracious, right? Avram Avinu is the quintessential person of amuna, yeah? And he gets, you know, arrested for um, Avon Azara, you know, for what's it called? He broke all these idols in the store, and um, he's, Nimrod sentenced him to be thrown into Kivshin Ash. Says, Avram says, okay, I'm willing to go into the Kivshin Ash. I don't and he goes in and he comes out. Yeah? Right? He has Emuna. Right? He's a Gal Emuna. He was willing to go into the Kivshin Aish because he really, I think, his brother Haran, on the other hand, he gets thrown into the Kivshin Aish. He comes out, but he got burned up on the inside. Says Rav Katzka Levenstein, unbelievable idea here. He said, he had Emuna on the outside, but he didn't have Emuna on the inside. Right? It didn't permeate every single iota of his being. Right, by um, by um, by Haran, and therefore he didn't get burned on the outside. He came out on the outside, but on the inside he got burned up. Right, a gadol and amuna, amuna permeates his whole being, and everything he does is based on his amuna. You know, I remember the day that Rav Shlomo Brevda was a nifter, and I I, I got a phone call. I taught kriya because he was my Rebbe Mufak in in Ashkaf and uh, understanding Musar and many other things as well. But I think if I wanted to um, uptight, you know, uptight Rev Brevda, he was an Isha Muna, right? Every single thing he did, he wouldn't move his finger without a Muna, you know? He's actually, he was the Tom of the Briskarov. He was the first Tom in a Brisk, yeah? And the Briskarov tested him like for many, many days before he would accept him as the first Tom in a Brisk, yeah? And the um, Moshe Sternbach told me once, he said, People think the godless that Briskarov was his Torah, you know. I remember I read Rav Chaim um, once told his wife, like he was dancing, he said, my son is a bigger Talmud Chacham than me. <laughs> he said about it, the Briskarov. He said, my son. So Moshe Sternbach said, you know, people think the godless of the Briskarov was his Torah. He says, it's true, he's big in Torah. But he was even bigger in Amuna. He was even bigger in Amuna. He said, he wouldn't move his finger like this without checking in with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, if this was the proper Ishtalus or not. You know, we shouldn't be doing. Like, he resonated Amuna. He resonated Amuna, right? And that's a Godel in Amuna. Not pushed by outside forces to do things, yeah? That everything you do, it's the Shorish, the source of it, it comes from Amuna. And that's a Godel. That's an Isha Amuna. That's a Godel. That's a real, a real Godel. Um, a guttle in Amuna. And look, um, the Briskarov was like that. I remember I was once talking to Moshe Sternbach and the sirens went off, you know, and everybody's panicking, going, and Sternbach like didn't bat an eyelid, you know. Yeah. And the, the Sternbach went for a walk every day with Briskarov. The Briskarov really held, he was like the next, the manic of the next uh, generation. Yeah, he didn't bat an eyelid. I was talking to him. Finally, one of his sons says, maybe we should say tell him. He said, yes, you should say tell him, you know. But he said, look, the Briscoe Rebbe, every bomb has an address, yeah. If it's going to fall, it's going to fall. It's going to fall here, it's going to fall there. I think he was, he was sitting in his house, and they made him go downstairs, and then a, a missile fell where he was sitting. He said, if I was sitting there, it wouldn't have come, you know. Like, it caused me, caused me damage over here. <laughs> so, Lamaisa, that is what's called, that's a guttle in a moon. I'll just tell you one more, I have to tell you one more story. It's just such an incredible story. Moshe Sternbach, it was the first yard site of his wife, yeah, this was maybe about 15 years ago, and they were going to the uh, kever, was at Harazesim, 
and they had a GPS, you know. So, okay, you have to know, GPS, it's not always reliable, you know. You know, it's not a, what they call it here, what they call it Waze, right, Waze. It doesn't always work. And also, it doesn't take into account necessarily Arab towns, right. So the GPS took them straight into the middle of an Arab town, and there were 15 Arabs who tried to lynch or storm car. I heard this from him, you know, so I'm just, and they were throwing stones at the car, and it broke the window of the driver, and the driver was hit, and he was bleeding. Okay. Anyway, they were driving like this, you know, this. Miraculously, they got away. Ten minutes, and they had no idea where they were. Ten minutes later, Sternbach looked up from his, he was all the time just learning. Ten minutes look, he looked up and says, something happened? You know? Like, he was totally, you know, impervious to everything that was going on. Anyway, they wound up in Arab town, and um, they had no idea where they were. They called the army. The army had no idea where they were. So the guy at the gas station explained them how to get to that town. So they, anyway, okay, that's what happened. They got the army, got them out. The ne next day, it was a Friday, I think, or a Thursday. Rav Sternbach made a kiddush at his house on Shabbos. I asked the rabbi. I said, "Was the Rav concerned for any seconds that something was wrong?" He said, "No, not at all. You know, I'm only, I only, I'm, I'm afraid of the bar bar You know." Okay, this is obviously very high madrigus, but this is what's called an Isha Muna. An Isha Muna is when the Amuna permeates our being to such a degree that everything we do is based on our Amuna, and, and that's how we live our lives. And if there's any time when this is critical, this is what the mission is coming to teach us, yeah? That when we get to that point with Fchel Dimashek, which we're in now, yeah? It's Pasha, every Gadol has told me, right? Exception of one. <laughs> That, um, okay, it was Rosh Fisher. I asked him, he said once, you know, Rosh Hashanah Fisher was a very, very interesting person. He was very different than his brother, right? I had a cash with Israel Yaakov. Israel Yaakov Fisher, I once went to his house, we had certain problems, and he said, All the mezuzahs in your house are puzzled. Every, everyone. Okay, I got them checked. I said, No, no, none of them. He said, So you don't have a mezuzah on your front door of your building? I said, We do have one. It's puzzled. He said, We just got checked. He said, So your soup is puzzled. Anyway. So I brought him my ksuba. Rav Meisman was my Masada Kedushan. The word Travis, like the last letter, he stretched it out. So I felt like Homer in the line. Anyway, he says, Puzzle, get a new ksuba. Okay, we got a new ksuba. But okay, it was a very, you know, he had a very, like, unique form of communication. His brother was much more like, you know, I would chilled out, you know. But, like, when he was takif about something, he was trying to keep. I said, he once told me, he said, Man, it tastes, there's no difference between now and every time in Jewish history. You know? but, but every other Gadol that I spoke to, which is about 20 of them, they've all told me, like, we're in Chavli Mashiach right now. This is right now with Chavli Mashiach. This is like, a, you know, very you know, auspicious times. And the Mishnah tells us that when we get to that time, Ein lanu lishon elevin Right. So what does that mean? Why is it telling us, you know, we don't find that um, expression of Kaddish Baruch Hu. It's called Avin Hashem Why? I think the Pshat is like this, that if you look for God today, that you'll have a hard time finding Him, you know, because the world has really banished the Bori Olam. It used to be a mo, you know, we're talking maybe 100, 150 years ago. If you needed a glass of water, you know, what did you have to do? You have to walk a mile to the well. You hope the well is working. You hope that you're not going to get robbed along the way. You hope that the goyim didn't, like, fill it up with dirt or chametz, whatever they used to do. You know, you get the bucket, you come back, you know, and then you have a glass of water, right? Um, all the time, you have to daven. If it's like Berkowitz told me, this grandmother would make a cake. She would take the batter, she would daven to Hashem. She put, in the, uh, she put in the oven, you know, they probably had very primitive oven. Everything, every single thing she did was tefillah, yeah, right? He says, we don't have that today. Why is that? The primary reason is because technology has taken over so many things. It's just like, it's given. Yeah, you put in the oven, you do it, you know. All of the steps which we normally needed tefillah for have more or less been eliminated. Yeah? They've been made simple. And that's what it means, Avinu Shavosh We can't be Margish or Kaddish Baruch present in this world anymore because technology has gone to such an extent that we don't see him anymore. We can't recognize it anymore. And that, on one hand, it's nice, it's convenient. We have, you know, all these things that are so much easier. We have so much time on our hands. But on the hand, it takes away that. The Isha Muna, every single thing that they do, right, is affected by their Muna, right? And not because the circumstances push them to do something. And that's what I believe. That's what Chazal is telling us about Noach, right? Noach, he was Mammon Bain Mammon. Okay, in the end, he got on the boat, right? You know, in the end, Now, I have to be fair. Right, Minashamayim probably they were, you know, to be fair to Noah. 
I was, um, I have a um, biography that just came out from Shlomo Brevda, and I opened it up this Shabbos, and Bidyuk was on this Rashi, and Bidyuk was explaining this, and it was from Chatzik Levenstein, right? So I heard, this is what I heard from Chatzik Levenstein, from her Brevda. He said that he was a cotton in Amuna, right? But he says a different shot over there, which is almost exactly the opposite, which it says he didn't want to get on the ark because he didn't want to, uh, the whole world to be destroyed. He wanted to be mindless to the door. It's hard for me to believe that Rav Chatzkel said that because Chazal tell us that it's called Meinoach, right? The Haftorah says called, this week, it calls it Meinoach, and Rav Meisman every year he said the same thing, right? It was called Meinoach because Noach was not enough dog on the generation, right? After hundred years, he wasn't trying. He wasn't trying to make people do. Right. Yeah. People would come up to him and make fun of him and try to kill him. Right. So okay. So I I more confident what I heard from Rebbe the Sifchat. What he says. What 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 it says there that um, because he was he he didn't want people to get you know to get killed to get destroyed. I'm sure he didn't. I'm sure he didn't want the whole generation to get destroyed. It's not so push it, the whole world getting destroyed. But in any event. Right? I believe that's pshat in what Chazal are telling us. Because Chazal say he was mamin bein mamin, right? He had a muna, but he didn't have a muna. He was a cotton in a muna, right? And we have to all look into our own lives and see what we are doing, right? What's motivating us? What's pushing us? What, how do we, our whole relationship to our Kaddish Baruch Hu, right? Why do we daven, right? Do we daven because, you know, you have to, because that's what says the sitter, and you get up, and they, or we daven because we, we realize, like, I really need the Bari Oilam, you know? I really, like, I can't do anything without the Bari Oilam. I just an experience this morning. You know, I, I tried daven every day at the Kosovo. I, I went to the mikvah this morning. I got out, and I saw it was 4.31. Okay, the bus comes officially like 4.32, 4.33. I wasn't so close by. I have someone drives me usually, sitting shiva now. But, okay, so... I started walking pretty quickly to the bus stop. I got to the bus stop just as the bus got there. But I was in this side, and you know, not the back of the bus, not the front of the bus. Okay, the bus got there. I knocked on the door, he showed up in the bus, and he just drove off. It was an Arab bus driver, right? So I guess he didn't, he held like only women get on the back, men don't, can't get in the back. You know, he was like from. So anyway, some reaction was, okay, come on, David, come on, let's talk about it. Okay, this is obviously. This is what Hashem was. If this is what happened, you know, okay, I thought maybe, you know, maybe I should have taken those extra steps. I was a little tired, whatever it was. But if it happened, that is what Hashem wants. Call ma the avid rachmana latav avid, and just accept it. Accept, accept it. This is. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm a mom, and you know, I have a long way to go. But real amuna means living your life with the bari olam, right? And this is what Rosh was saying about the briskarov. He wouldn't move his finger unless this is what he would calculate. Is this doing too much ishtadlis? What's the right ishtadlis? We see later on, it's, a, it's one of the most famous Beis HaLevis, yeah, um, in the whole Chumash, about Yosef. The Pasuk, the Medrash says, Ashri HaGever Sheyiftach Hashem. Say Yosef, that asked the Saram Ashkim to get him out of uh, jail, right? And the Beis HaLevis says, like, what's going on? What's right? You're saying Yosef, is Asher Hashem, and then, but he but he didn't too much style. He says no, because it was on such a high level of Amuna that for us it would have been fine, but for Yosef it wasn't. It was too much stylus, yeah. And this is what Rav Sternbach told me about the briskrov, that everything he did was weighing that getter, you know, of a stylish and what you should do. But the main nakuda is right. That's what I'm bringing out here from Noach is that we have to be gedolim and not ketanim in the Shabbos, right? And a cotton, the, as Yeshua said, the difference between a cotton and a gadol, a cotton does things because his parents told him to do so, you know? And parents can be your, your yin, you go to shul because, you know, you know if I don't go to shul, what's going to be? I'm not going to get my kids into gun, um, you know, or this, what are people going to say, what are you going to do, right? Think of how many things in life we do because what are other people going to say, what are other people going to think, right? And that shouldn't be our gauge, right? Our gauge should be our relationship with the Bari Olam and what he wants and what, 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 and how I should do that, and how I should do that. And that's the Gadol, that's Das, yeah? Really what, what Das Torah is, yeah? Is somebody who knows Kola Torah Kuloi, yeah? And based on what Kola Torah Kuloi says, the Chibor of Kola Torah Kuloi, that's, that's how you act. This is what Shlomo Zaman Arbach told, said, he said by his Leviah, he said, in 50 years I was married, we never had a fight, right? Because I did what the Torah says, yeah? We had any question, 
We went to the Torah, and the Torah says what to do. And that's, that's a godel. It's a, there's a godel in Torah, and there's a godel in Muna, right? We're going through hard times now. You know, um, you know uh, some, uh, Moshe Shimon told me that he was called up for, uh, for me, he might have to leave us, go to Miluim, you know, and how many people are, um, how many almanas and Yisomen there are. Rav Shafai was crying on Simple Torah, you know? Thousands of Yisomen almanas. Um, from soldiers, you know, who have been killed, people who have been attacked, people out of their homes, people who have been out of their ho- displaced from their homes for more than a year, you know, all the people who were killed on October 7th. These are difficult times, yeah? Um, and the avoda during these times really is to work on our Amunah, right? Work on Amunah. And okay, of course Amunah means you know, how we relate to a Kaddish Baruch Hu, that's for sure. By the way, if we mentioned that before, the word amuna comes from the word emunim. You know, in the army they have emunim, right? <laughs> I don't mean uh, emunim is Imun. what? Imun. Imun is it's training. The word emuna it doesn't mean faith. Yeah, it doesn't mean faith. Emun, the root of amun is not faith. Emuna means training. You come to amuna through training. It's a training process, right? And how do you train yourself? Yeah, whenever something. Someone once told me, a Makubal told me, the Arizal says that every minute there's three Nisyonos, yeah? But we're all having Nisyonos, right? We're all having Nisyonos all the time. How do you deal with your Nisyonos? When something happens, when you get news, you know, what's it? What we're talking about two days ago. What day is today? Today's Wednesday, right? Monday, I got a phone call, 7 o'clock in the morning. Someone told me something which was like, it was completely, I couldn't believe it. It was like one of the craziest things I ever heard in my life, you know, that happened to me. And like, okay, some pretty crazy things happened to me. Um, but I had no idea what to do, you know. It was just such insanity, I had no idea. So what I do, I got, I was sitting in my office, I got like a mat, and I just was a to Hashem. I said, Hashem, I have no idea what to do. Please help me, yeah, please help me. Anyway, afterwards I did some styles and broke Hashem, by the end of the day, everything was sorted out. You know, it was a pella. Um, but sometimes that's, in, in general, what we have to do is resign our self to Hashem. Rav Chaim Brisker said, right? He said, Amunah starts where Das ends. Yeah? We have to try to figure out, to the best of our abilities, what we're meant to do in any situation. Yeah? Um, Chazal tell us, right? Eilu b'nei arubim b'das, yeah? V'os n'ask b'heimah, anu b'heimah toshi Hashem. Eilu b'nei arubim b'arubim b'das, they're very smart people. Yeah? But they make themselves, they're makhniya themselves to Hashem. Our job during these days yeah? And believe me, Chazal tells the Nisyonos are going to get more and more difficult. As we get closer to the Tkufa of Moshiach, they'll become more and more difficult. Rav Sternbach said from Reli Apollyon an unbelievable thing, right? Rav Yochanan in Brachas, uh, Hey Amid Beis, says he used to carry around in his pocket a bone, right? He used to carry around a bone, right? Um, like this one, right? He said, Dain Garma de Ben Asiri. Right? And then Tosa says, I'm carrying a bone. Right? This is the bone of my 10th son. Right? He had 10 children die. You know what it is to have 10? My friend, Gabi Sassani, was, we had a spade for him in the coal. He lost 7 children. That's it. But 10 children die? Right? Then, Dain Garma de Benasiri. Right? The same of Yochanan, you look in Sanhedrin, Dafsari Zayim and Beis, he says, put me in any door, but not the door before Mashiach. Where we're in now, the door of Gula, the Mashiach. Yeah? Right? So, ask Rav Eliyapen, how can it be? How can it be that he can have 10 children die, but he doesn't want to be in this? What could be so bad? I mean, look, life is pretty good, you know? We come here, we have a base measures, we learn, shtag, you have breakfast even, yishkok, to all the guys who buy it, you know, Avrami comes specially, and, uh, and Shimi. So, um, you know, so what, what's so bad? What's going on? What's Tusuk Dorton? Yeah? So, said Rav Eliyapen, the problem is going to be the ink, lack of clarity. There won't be deus. There won't be clarity. There won't be direction. Rav Moshe Sternbach told me that the last year of the Chazanish life, he made 300 shidduchim. Every single person in B'nai Brak came to the Chazanish. He would say yes. He would say no. Yeah. And it was always right. Yeah. He made Rav Moshe Sternbach shidduch after he died. You know? He told um, his wife, uh, Shechter, that she should marry Rav Moshe Sternbach. And they went, they found him, they said, said the Chazanish said it, we have to do it. But, you know, the, we had people like the Chazanish. 
Baruch Hashem, we have, you know, unbelievable Moshe Hill Hirsch, Orlando, people today, but everyone understands that we're in a much lower generation. Yeah? We don't have the clarity. The day is some more Makoko. We should be doing, not should be doing, right? Someone got in touch with me and um, just yesterday he wrote to me, you know, uh, and it said, you know, like, the Haredim, they're like destroying the country, they're not serving the army, and this, and it's, yes, army, not army, what should we be doing, not should we be doing. What, what, things are just not clear today. We're living in a times when not clear. Kids going off the derek, how do you mechanic children properly? How do you keep them, you know, away from certain things? What do you keep them away from? What do you let them do? What do you not let them do? A person wrote me a long letter with 10 questions and very hard questions. Should I do this? Should I do that? What? It's, we don't have that level of clarity that previous generations had, both because our level of Torah is much, much lower, yeah? And both because there's so much of lack of, there's so much tumor in the world today and there's so much lack of clarity in all things. You know, a mull used to be even in the world. People knew, are you a man or a woman? You fill out a form, you know, the first question they ask, male or female? Today someone told me there's 64 choices, you know? You know, right? Male, female, both, neither, um, you know, uh, you mean this and, you know. Yeah. They told me, a guy from Harvard told me, he just graduated, right? They don't believe there's two genders anymore, so it's a spectrum. Where are you? Where do you fall on the spectrum? You know, a guy get up, Ben Shapiro, you know, he's a, you know, a, Jewish, a Jewish speaker. He said, you know what? A man is someone who cannot have children, you know, doesn't, can't, a woman, the, the, you know, it depends on how your body is. Like, he was like, what are you talking about? This is crazy. You know, like, the whole world is completely insane. Completely insane, you know. And people are saying things. You, like, wonder, like, these are educated people. Like, what's going on? This is what Chazal tell us, yeah, right? You look at those 19 things that are listed there in the Mishnah. All of them have to do with the breakdown of society, right? A lot of them have to do, it says, children will come against their fathers, daughters will go up against their mother-in-laws. There's going to be a breakdown of authority and society. We have election next week in America, you know, right? Right. These are the two candidates that America, a country of 300 million people, can produce, you know? One of them is crazy, and one of them is a complete... She has, she has no... My mother told me, she has no policy whatsoever. The only policy she has is she hates Trump. You know? That's it. What's going to happen if she becomes president? I don't know. You know, Trump said, Israel will be gone in two years. Okay. Oh, your husband's Jewish. Well, I don't know if that's going to help. But, you know, okay. I'm going to get in trouble for this. They probably won't see it until any time. But, you know, but look... But authority, leadership. It says, Pnei Dork, Pnei Kelev. We won't have leadership. The Chavetz Chaim said a kelim is like always looking back, and that's the point, right? Amun is not about looking back and popularity and, and things, right? Complete Amuna in the Bari Olam. And as the world begins to crumble, the Maral says like this, the Maral says, why is it called Chevli Mashiach? He says, before a woman has birth, gives birth, there's also Chevli Leda, right? What are these Chavalim all about? Says the Maral, before something new could come into the world, there has to be a complete breakdown of the old. Right? Before an Hashem comes into this world, the woman has to basically break down. A, a guy told me his wife gave birth uh, a few months ago. She said, I'm never going to have another baby again. I said, okay. He, he had five girls. He's waiting for a boy. Right? They had a girl. So I said, don't worry. Wait a few months. See, now, he called me up uh, last week. He says, my wife is dying to have another baby. You know? Because, okay, the body, like, Baruch Hashem, you know, we all can make slaughter on Isha. We don't have to go through that, but it's a complete... What? That's why they bring a chadas, right? Because they made a shvur, they can have a child again, right? But says the Maral, it's going to be the same thing before Mashiach comes. There's going to be complete breakdown of the world and society. And we're seeing it happening in front of our eyes, you know? Right? You know, I remember when it used to be, if you were a homosexual, you were called queer, right? Weird. Those are weirdos, you know? People tell me today, if you say that, you get fired from your job. My brother, he raises money um, to run an institution in St. Louis. He said he lost a million dollars from the Jewish Federation because he wasn't inclusive. Because you're not inclusive. To be inclusive, you have to include all spectrums, you know, this one and that one and, you know, all sorts of things which we can't mention here, which you already have. But, right? And if you don't believe that, then you don't get money from the Jewish Federation because this is, you're not inclusive. You know? Inclusive, you know? So, we're seeing today a complete breakdown of society. And it makes things more difficult. Yeah? It used to believe if you didn't believe in God, they'd put you in jail. Today, if you try to teach in schools God, then you could be put in jail. You know, what are you forcing religion on people, right? We're seeing more and more a breakdown of society, a breakdown of ideals, a breakdown of morality, right? 
and everything is everything is crumbling and falling to pieces. Right? It's in this time, Chazal tell us that we really, really need to have a Muna. Right? Eilan Elisha and Elvina Shemaya, like we said, Hashem's presence is not here, is not seen and felt so much anymore. I asked once of Israel Orbach, there was a girl going around the base Yaakov who was, uh, she was a from girl and she went off the derech. She went to India and she sat with these uh, gurus. Yeah? She was talking about her experiences. And she talked about these things. It says you're not supposed to talk about doing a verse. He said, it's all right today because it used to be the street was permeated with your Shemayim. Today you don't feel that anymore. You don't feel God's presence in this world. And under these conditions, this is when Mashiach has to come. Mashiach is going to come when we reach the ultimate point of darkness. Yeah, this is what Chazal is telling us. Complete breakdown of everything, of society. Right? It says, Yuri hate and Masu. Right? And this I have a friend for 40 years who was saying, people are sitting and learning when people are dying, fighting. Okay, there's, I'm not saying there's no issues at all. Right? But he told me, he said, Haredim are worse than Arabs. Yeah, you know, they're worse than Arabs, you know? And like, I know, I have a second cousin, she lives in, um, in Ramakan. She says, all the problems are all because of the Haredim. Everything is because of them. They're destroying the country. You know, okay, you don't believe. You have a different ideology in this. But to say such things, it's Mamash what Chazal tell us. Yerichet Nimasu. It's going to be disgusting, like Tipa Shrucha. And we're seeing, we're seeing all the things happen around us. Yeah? And in this time, we really need to work on Amunah. We can't be a cotton anymore. Under such circumstances, you can't be a cotton. You have to be a gadol. And you become a gadol. Amunim, Amunah is through Amunim. It's through practice. Whatever happens to you, like I say, to me, the most important Allah in Shulchan Aruch is Koman David Rahman on the of it. We learned it here in the afternoon call last month, right? It means that whenever something happens to you, right, accept it, accept it from Hashem. Remember what the Briscoe said, everything is about your relationship with the Bari Island. Everything, all the time, to constantly be thinking about that relationship. What can I do? What can I do to improve my relationship? My Torah, my Tefillah, my Bein Amla Chavera, my Midos, especially interaction with your spouse. All of these things, they have to be directed, um, directed by Amuna. And that's really um, a major, major limud from our Pasha. Mamen ve'en a mamen, right? We can't afford today to be an eno mamen. Yeah, a cotton. We can't afford to be eno. And like Chazal tell us, me noach, we have to be doig on the door. Yeah? And even if they're saying terrible things about us, we have to be doig. To be chosen with tshuva, they're tinek shenizhba, they don't know, right? Um, right? They don't understand, they don't understand how much you know, how much we're protecting the country, how much we're doing for the country, you know, how have I that, uh, that they should, their eyes should be opened up, and they should understand how critical the Torah is for the um, maintenance of this country. In any event, so there's a few ideas as we start this man, um, and, uh, you know, Rav Chatzka Levenstein said, the Pasuk in, in, in Kel says, Tov achris dover meri shaso, right? If you want to see a guy, you have the sheets that we're giving out here, right? This man officially ends um, Tezayin um, Tevis. Tezayin Tevis is the end of Chorif Aleph. It's a short man. It's almost over already. Yeah? Uh, we have a lot to do. But if you want to see a guy on Thursday, Tezayin Tevis, who's mamishtaging, you can look around today. Right? The way you start something, that's the way you'll end. Tov Reishas Dover Machrisai. Sorry. Tov Achris Dover Machrisai. That the way something ends is the way it begins. Everything comes from the start. The way you start something is the way it perpetuates. We're starting the Chumash, we're starting Uzman, we're starting, you know, uh, uh, a new Tukufa, uh, right? We have to, it all comes from the beginning. The way you begin in something is the way that it will uh, perpetuate. So, we should have Siyat Deshmaya, we should be strengthening ourselves in Tefillah, strengthening ourselves in Amuna, in our Kesha with the Kesha Baruch Hu, in our perception of the world, and everything you should do, right? You walk in a room and turn on the light. It's, it used to be much easier. They had these Italian light bulbs. One out of 20 times, the light bulb would just explode, you know? So it made it much easier to see Hashem, you know, when, you know. Um, okay, today they have LEDs. They improved a little bit, so it's not as easy. But when you turn on a light, realize the light, the room is getting light because of Kaddish Baruch Hu. Everything you do, try to eliminate the technological blinding has caused us not to see a Kaddish Baruch Hu. When you turn the water on, because Baruch is giving us water. It's a matana from the Bari Elam. We don't have to walk uh, hours and hours with, and, and spending things with time. Try to see Hashem in your life. Right? They asked this question to Rav Chaim Briska when we were six. Where is Hashem? 
So wherever you let him in, the more you let the Bore Olam into your life, the more you'll see him, the more you'll, you'll, you'll feel it, the more siyata deshma you'll have. The Vilna Gon says the word Shechina means a Karas Hashem. He says in the Agada, Shechina is a Karash Baruch who is Shechin when you're Makar him. The more you see the Bore Olam, the more you will experience it, and the more siyata deshma you'll have. The level of Hatzlocha you have is totally on how much you see the Bari Olam in your life and you recognize it and you feel its presence. And that is um, what we all have to do. Kashbaku should help us in this very worthy endeavor. And we should be Zoyche, um, not only for ourselves, but for the whole door, right? For the whole door, because it's such a, um, we're in such a difficult door. And as Chazal told us, it's going to get more and more complicated. It's going to get more and more unclear, right? What's right and what's wrong and who's right and who's wrong. And we can't let that insanity around us, right? And one of the best ways to do that is, as little as possible, listen to the news, you know? Um, know what's going on. You should know what's going on. If, if soldiers are killed, if there's a pigua, you should know that it's happening. We should feel for the people. We should feel the suffering that's going on. But not to get into the parshanut and all these things going on and what's going to be. Hashem should give us the Adish, my man came through at some.